Welcome to the Top 10 Bikes with me, Dave Lee Travis. This week we'll be looking at the trickiest, fastest and best 10 learner legals on the market today as voted for by our panel of experts. So do stay tuned to see which of the little ones makes it to the number one spot. Enough with the talking, let's bring on those learner legal bikes. At 10 is the Ickel Honda CG125. Like a phone call from the mother-in-law, the CG125 seems to go on forever and ever and ever. With a 124cc four-stroke engine that's as strong as Mike Tyson's biceps, the CG125 will quite happily keep that back wheel turning no matter how demanding the rider is. And with a chassis that'll carry you through those city streets and back roads confidently and comfortably, the little Honda sounds like a perfect first bike prospect. However, the CG125 is let down greatly by its brakes, suffering drum brakes both front and rear. The bike lacks the same feel and stopping power as some of its competition. Also, with a look that's done the CG125 proud since the bike's introduction in 1991, you could be forgiven for thinking it's about time the bike had a bit of a makeover because, let's face it, it's not the prettiest, is it? But you should never judge a book by its cover. And once all is said and done, Honda's CG125 will do exactly what you want, when you want, and how you want. And that's what we all want, isn't it? Now you've seen the bike, let's find out what our panellists thought. The CG125 basically represents value for money. It's one of those bikes where you fill it up, get to wherever you're going to go, even if it's 100, 150 miles, and there will still be petrol right in the top of the tank. The Honda CG125, a four-stroke Honda, Small capacity, it's never going to let you down, it's going to go on forever. Goodbye if you just want to get from A to B. I think if you've got to buy a budget, i.e. under £2,000, 125, that's a Swiss watch reliable, the CG is the one for you. So at number 10, the Honda CG125 scored 49% from our panellists. At number 9 is Yamaha's offering the SR125. The SR125 has the laid-back look of a cruiser. High bars, pear-shaped tank and dual king and queen style seat. The relaxed riding position is ideal for congested city centres and perfect for all the little learners out there. I don't mean little in a disparaging way, I mean it quite literally because the seat is only 74 centimetres off the ground. Even Snow White's little helpers can get their feet down. The engine is a very basic four-stroke single which really isn't going to set the world alight with speed. Unless you're riding down the north face of Everest, you'll struggle to get beyond 65 miles an hour. On the upside, it's very robust, well-built and balanced. Low speed handling is an absolute doddle, which is why it's such a popular novice bike. Training schools all over the country use them. If you want a reliable, easy to handle commuter bike or a laid back learner bike, then the SR is just the ticket. Not overburdened with power or particularly good looking, the SR makes up for it on price, retailing at £2,200. So if you fancy yourself as Dennis Hopper or Peter Fonda whilst cruising at 65 miles an hour, then the lovely laid-back SR125 has your name all over it. Don't take my word for it, let's hear from the panel. If you really want to have a Harley, but you only want to have a single-cylinder 125cc bike, buy an SR125. That will probably appeal to one person in the country, uh, but that's the sort of bike it is. It's, it's a, not a very nice looking machine. I mean, to do, the, to do the whole cruiser thing justice, you do need more metal than a 125. And, uh, and this thing does kind of look like a mini cruiser. The Yamaha SR125. How many times have you seen these trudging up and down the high street with a learner on with a bright orange bib? Basic transport to get you into motorcycling. The darling of CBT instructors, very, very low seat height and good riding position make this an ideal bike for novices to learn to ride on. So, the Yamaha SR125 at number 9 scored 51%. In at number 8, it's the BMW C1125. Have you ever seen a bike with a roof before? Er, uh, no? Well, here it is. 
the BMW C1 125. Where do I begin with this one then? As well as a roof, the C1 has a seat belt, a safety cage and crumple zones. Sounds like a car. The C1 is where car meets bike and not in the crashing into each other sense, it saves you getting all kitted up for your commute in the morning. In most European countries, you don't have to wear a helmet because you're belted into the safety cage. Unfortunately, here in Blighty, you will still need a skid lid and the pleasure of crash helmet hair. The engine won't start until you've belted up. A nice little safety feature for you. Around town, the C1 is nippy enough to get you through the congestion and is capable of motorway cruising. The downside of the C1 is its weight and size. Its wheelbase is 1488 millimeters and it weighs 185 kilos. It's not cheap either, over 3000 pounds. Then of course there are those unusual looks. You either love it or loathe it. What was BMW thinking? The design bothers me. Personally, I would not like to slip on some diesel, not have a major accident, but slip on some diesel and be cocooned and seat belted in. Not happy with that idea. The BMW C1, what a wacky thing. It's basically a scooter with a roof. If you want a pillion, it has to sit outside at the back. Can't see the point and it's too much money. Now the thing is, this is great in other countries where you don't have to wear a helmet because the BMW C1 uh, in its 1T5 guys and in the, the bigger uh, 200cc guys, you can actually, you wear seat belts, so you strap yourself into it and you don't have to wear a helmet. Unfortunately in this country, you strap yourself into it and you have to wear a helmet, which kind of sort of goes against the whole reason for it to actually exist. Our panellists have scored the BMW C1 125 73%. Our next bike, in at number seven, is the Kajiva Mito 125. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be a Ducati 998, said the Italian Kajiva Mito before disappearing into a cloud of smoke. Draped in a drop-dead gorgeous shell, the Mito is arguably the best-looking bike in today's show, and thankfully, it's not mutton dressed as lamb. Hidden deep within its supermodel body lies a 125cc two-stroke engine that will produce a de-restricted 31 brake horsepower. Add this to its six gear setup and a claimed top speed of 100 miles an hour and you have a fun factor pushing 10 out of 10. Like in Aprilia, the engine needs to be pushed hard to get the most from the Mito, but when you get it right, the experience is brilliant. In other words, keep that engine singing. The chassis is superb, the handling excellent and the brakes are good too. It all adds up to a big bike feel on a little bike. If you feel so inclined, you could take it to the racetrack and give some one to five mini stock racers a run for their money. Around 500 pounds cheaper than the RS125 and oozing eye candy, the Mito makes an ideal first bike for anyone wanting to develop some serious biking skills on a very capable platform. What do our experts think of the Ducati wannabe? The old Mito 125, seven gears in that box. Um... It chimes some nice songs, my number one bike there, I think just because I like playing with the seven-speed gearbox, but uh, on a serious note, always been a favourite. Kajiba Maito, what a brilliant looking bike. What a way to learn your motorcycle trade. Any 17-year-old that gets a bike like this should be well proud. It's the first stepping stone to real bikes. If you see one at the traffic lights, it does look like it could just be a, a Ducati 916 or a 996 or a 998. Uh, but similarly to the RS125, there's not going to be a lot of power to play with because it's a single cylinder two stroke. Uh, but what you do have, again, is very good handling, uh, but more importantly, dressed in the clothes that make it look absolutely gorgeous. The Kajiva Mito scored 74% from our panellists. Number six in our countdown of Learn Illegals is the Sax Roadster 125. Unlike many other bikes in today's show, the Roadster styling harks back to the good old days of biking, when style and chrome said more about your machine than the claimed brake horsepower or the badge on the fuel tank. Weighing a bit more than the rest of the group at 133 kilos and with a claimed maximum power of 13 brake horsepower at 9,500 RPM, the Roadster will not be smashing any 125cc world speed record, but the Sax more than makes up for this in its handling, which is spot on. Plus, you have to remember that a bike like this isn't built for speed. It's built for comfort and practicality, which the little Sax achieves. The neat little V-twin engine with chrome exhaust really looks the part housed in a Roadster-style chassis. This bike really is a break from the norm. Learners are no longer doomed to riding uncool, restricted 50s. 
There are some funky little numbers out there, and the sax is definitely one of them. Summing up, the Roadster is a bike that'll offer all the thrills of an old-school custom bike with the setup and build quality of a very well-engineered modern motorcycle. Workmanlike, slightly dull, not the way you want to learn. You want to learn on something that does give you, that does give you a bit of emotions, because biking's all about emotions, and for me, when I rode the sax, it didn't really do it for me, so there you go. This really is one from the ugly bug ball. But it's okay, I suppose, if you like that type of thing. Our panel has scored the Sax Roadster at 76%. Halfway through our chart of top 10 learner legals, and it's time for a break. But please don't go anywhere, as coming up in part two is this. See you after the break. Welcome back to Top 10 Bikes. I'm Dave Lee Travis, guiding you through the top 10 learner legals of 2002, as voted for by our panel of experts. Straight in at number five is the Honda NSR 125. Sandwiched firmly in the center of the field is Honda's NSR 125 fighting force, aimed squarely at the heels of the Kajiva Mito and the Aprilia RS125. Priced towards the top end of the field, the NSR isn't cheap, so let's see what you get for your money. Powered by a 124cc two-stroke engine that'll churn out a restricted 11-brake horsepower at 10,000 RPM, the NSR produces performance figures in keeping with the other sports learner legals. Launched way back in 1989 and enjoying a successful racing history with riders like Loris Caperossi, the NSR has always been a confident machine to ride. Sitting on an almost perfect balance setup, the NSR will carry its rider through the most demanding B roads or cruising down the local high street in search of a burger bar. And in keeping with other Honda brands, the NSR engine is a peach. With reliability being its middle name, the NSR will need regular servicing every 8,000 miles. That's 6,000 more than the Kajiva Mito or the Aprilia RS125. It does lack the flair of the Italian offerings in the Learner Legal class, but it's reliable, it's good looking and a great handler. That makes it a worthy purchase, if you can afford one. Very much the poor relation to Aprilia's RS125. Almost as quick. It looks a bit odd uh, and gets outsold by the RS by some margin. It's now getting a bit long in the tooth in terms of style and, and what it does for street credibility over and above, say, the Kajiva or the Aprilia. Um, it's a good bike still, though, but as I say, I think, um, you know, the years are showing on it now, and if Honda were to do a complete revamp, if they felt the marketplace was there, um, then they'd certainly have a winner. It's been a stalwart over the years, and again, we've sold loads and loads of them as time went by. Our panel of experts gave the Honda 77%. In at number four on our chart is the Aprilia RS125. With a dry weight of 115 kilos and a screaming 124cc two-stroke engine pumping out 33 brake horsepower, this little Italian will propel the rider to nearly 100 miles an hour, which in this category is very impressive indeed. Add to this the handling and balance setup that'll shame some bikes four times its size, the RS125 is capable of being thrown deep into even the most demanding corners, thanks to its pin-sharp steering. All the while safe in the knowledge that the Aprilia brakes won't let you down, feeling sure-footed and giving plenty of feedback to the rider. As with most two-strokers, the real power only kicks in when you hit the power band, and oh boy, is it fun when it does. Keeping in the right gear can be challenging, but that's all part of the fun of a two-stroke. It's basically the world champion race bike transferred to the road. Now, I could go on telling you just how good it is, but instead, you should all go out and have a go on one. You won't be disappointed. This is what our panel had to say. The Aprilia RS125. It's a great bike if you want to pretend to be Valentino Rossi. Oh, the old RS125. It's fantastic. It looks great. The kids love them. The kids look good on them because they're smaller than me, rotten lot. So there's not a lot of power to play with, but the handling is still excellent. It looks absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you know, the Italians really know how to make a bike look gorgeous. Uh, so, you know, if you're a little bit sex starved and you're 17, 18, 19, 31, then perhaps you should buy one of these bikes. They're absolutely stunning. So the Aprilia RS125 goes in our chart at 79%. 
So that leads us nicely to our number three, the Kawasaki KMX125. The KMX has the dubious title of the most nicked bike in Britain. Perhaps that shows just how sought after it is. The KMX is perfect for nipping around town and getting down and dirty off-road at weekends. It's a truly versatile machine, happy around town and even happier playing in the mud. The unrestricted version has a wicked power band. Hold onto your hat when you hit that. It's a thirsty little devil if you keep it in the power. The restricted versions suitable for learners are a bit on the dead side, but once you pass your test, you can easily de-restrict the engine and have lots of fun with all that extra power. The KMX is a willing and stylish performer and will entertain learners or future Ricky Carmichaels. For a two-stroke, the KMX has loads of torque. Inclines, passengers, it just takes them all in its stride. The high riding position exaggerates the handling. The suspension is a bit soft so the bike floats through corners. The front wheel can be encouraged to defy gravity if you know what you're doing. The KMX is fun on the road and off the road. If you buy one, keep it under wraps. Remember, most nicked bike in Britain? Our panel had this to say. A great little learner trailer that'll survive as many spills as you can throw at it. The seat height is a, a bit on the tall side, but as soon as you sit on it, the suspension sags down and you'll be able to touch the floor okay. Anything green, Kawasaki, looks good, it's got the right image, but um, yeah, I can't really knock it. it, it it's, a, it's a good all-round trail bike, but I'd still rather have a DT125. As an ex-KMX125 owner, I just want to say this, buy one. They're absolutely fantastic. Little uh, 125cc two-stroke engine. Uh, you're, you're looking at a top speed of ooh, 60, 70 miles an hour. Really robust, been going for ages. Get one in green. So the KMX is at number three with a score of 80%. Our top 10 countdown has brought us to number two. The Gilera Runner 125 is very worthy of this position. The Gilera Runner is a bit of a strange one. The BMW C1 is where bike meets car and the Gilera Runner is where bike meets scooter. The Runner uses a motorcycle type frame which helps handling. Due to this innovation, the Runner has lost the practical aspect of being a step through. So for the ladies and cross dressers out there, no skirts, the handling is very settled and stable thanks to the frame. The acceleration is enough to show any car a clean set of tyres at the lights. It can even hold its own on the motorway. It's light, agile and perfect for packed city centres. The runner is developing a following of loyal fans. There are some nutters out there who have gone touring on these tough little bikes. The Poggiali GP replica is available for about £100 extra for the sports fans out there. And the Gilera has captured the imagination of the youth. It's fun, it's sporty, and it's very affordable at just under £2,000. Pretend you're Poggiali, give the Gilera runner a whirl. Gilera runners, I love them. 125 is a great bike to buy because we all like to make them go a bit quicker, and uh, there are lots of tuning kits out there for these. And uh, get up to 172cc, and, and you're really flying. Top scoot, top hoot. It'll sit at 70 miles an hour for as long as you want it to and it does big skids. If you want to look at something that's probably a bit more practical than an actual geared learner uh, 125, then look at these sorts of scooters like the Jalera because uh, you may find that they're sort of a, a better way and a more effective way of getting onto the road. The Jalera Runner 125 scored 83% from our panel. Before we find out what is the number one learner legal, let's run down the top 10 so far from 10 to two. At 10, it's the unstoppable Honda CG125. In at number 9, it's the Yamaha SR125. At number 8, yes, the BMW C1. At 7, the Kajiva Mito. In at 6 is the funky Sax Roadster. The Capirossi wannabes are at number 5 with the Honda NSR125. And in at 4, we find the lively Aprilia RS125. At 3, the KMX125. Not quite making it to the top spot is the robust Gilera runner. So that leaves us with the number one spot. And the prestigious number one spot goes to the Kajiva Planet, the Italian firm's learner legal masterpiece. Looking as aggressive as the incredible Hulk suffering a hangover, the Planet is a seriously good little bike. 
Powered by an 18-brake horsepower two-stroke engine, the Planet will comfortably transport a rider and a Pallium passenger to wherever you want to go. Thanks to its awesome street bike profile, the Planet can easily be mistaken for the larger Ducati Monster. Unlike the totally focused sports learner legals, the Planet's designed to be ridden with an air of coolness, demanding to be cruised down the street. Very Italian. Cool? This bike makes 80s icon Magnum PI look positively geeky. The Planet also has a quick turn of power available on tap if a set of decent twisties present themselves, making the riding experience always enjoyable and exciting. The Planet shares the same chassis as the Mito, and it handles like a dream. The detuned engine pulls incredibly well for a small two-stroke. Its cool looks and useful under-tank helmet storage make it a real winner. If you dare to be different, and a sports learner legal just isn't your bag, then the Kajiba Planet is simply the best that your hard-earned money can buy. The Planet is a top fun bike. It has no fairing and uses the same engine as the Mito, and it'll even wheelie. Kajiba Planet, engine from the Mito, take off the Ducati looking fairing, uh, plonk on some high bars, uh, plonk on some slightly lower footrests, give it a naked roadster look, et voila. Absolutely stunning. This learner legal masterpiece scored 84% from the panellists. I am delighted to accept this award on behalf of three cross motorcycles for the Kajiva Planet. This motorcycle has been voted best learner legal motorcycle by an independent panel. The main attributes of the motorcycle are that it allows people, both ladies and gents, to build up confidence through its low seat height, ease of manoeuvrability, light weight, whilst having excellent road holding capabilities together with reliable, good brakes. It has given many years of service, both to learners in the past, and we hope it continues to do so in the future. Well, we're at the end of our chart of top 10 learner legals for 2002, so all that's left to say is thanks very much for watching. Thank you.